Back then, there were XX sounds, though the loudest still hard to hear over the dominant roar of the XY. Eventually perceived as a problem, places set aside to allow the XX to sound out, gather density and volume. This segregation satisfied no one. The clipped whim of classification and containment reminiscent of domestication. And caught in a media cycle of little misrepresentation, the scene always dominated the herd. Her dress received louder than her noise. The reasons for this were complicated, historic, embedded, ingrained, their own fault, a blend of the above. Things shifted slowly, but not at the rate of change of all other aspects of the 21st century. It would perhaps still be the same today, had it not been for the syndrome. Mariana looks out of the crowd, most with eyes closed, moving their heads in figures of eight, playing with angles of ears to wave. Mariana is playing first tonight at Ola Ligas, the venue behind the nondescript door, down the lane, off the side street, in the suburb a few too many away from the centre. She drew the short straw tonight, no headliner hierarchies here, an unwritten rule that keeps egos in check and genre battles gentle. Mariana is playing herself. She taps her source, her body the feed, lets her program sort patterns, and then she tweaks the results. The thump of heart and flow of blood become the base of tidal surges, sucking undertoes. The movement of joint and bone, finger and limb, create tectonic upheaval. The zing of scheming neurons, the crack, snap, hiss, pop of electricity. Bringing the inside out. This is the noise of women. Before, they had the wail and the shriek. Now, the whole being can be sourced and revealed and turned inside out into song. Mariana feels good, her pulse increasing, beat responding, waves breaking, sound peaking. Then it's flatline sign as she pulls the plug. Mariana looks out at the applauding crowd and it's 90% female. Ivana looks out at the crowd, and it's 90% female. She takes that statistic, along with many others, and manifests them into her sonic social demography. Mapping the shifts, riding the curves and crashes. She hopes to find answers in the patterns and flows, to hear what so far has not been seen. This is the sound of politics and the politics of sound. Of course, music has always been political. 
back before, the mainstream a major cog in the machinations of the military-industrial entertainment complex. Opiates and aphrodisiacs keep them moving to the beat. But now that only half the numbers are susceptible, the music machine's half as useful. Deemed a woman's act, music is tolerated, but not encouraged. So on its last legs, a marginal mainstream slides into the darkness of a catacombic underground. Welcome to Ola Ligas. Jones looks up at the stage and it's 100% female. The crowd, five men to 45 women. Not that men aren't allowed, just some come to make trouble and Bernice, the bouncer, is pretty formidable. No matter how many subsidised sport, uh, avatar porn and comedy galas they're given, some men still believe, if I can't have it, no one can. And things are getting a little more serious. Every century, it seems, breeds a whack cult ready to call for a witch burning with access to governmental ears. But Jones comes here often. He's okay, fanboy. If that's what they think, he doesn't mind so much, just feels lucky. He's one of the remaining, the 15% who can still feel the music. Profound auditory agnosia syndrome. PARS. Affecting 85% of the XY population. 0.05% effect on XX population, though it is strongly believed XX carry the as yet unidentified mutation. Cause unknown, but strong evidence points to overexposure to radio frequencies which reached peak bandwidth saturation in the mid 21st century. The hearing mechanism remains fully functional, with the subject able to understand and produce speech and accept causal relationship of action to sounds, if the action is visible. However, in the absence of any visual signifier, the subject is unable to identify a sound disconnected from its source, nor make sense of patterning pitch or rhythmic formulations. The subject feels no effect from any form of audible construction. Jones feels extra lucky. He's an even rarer case. He can actually try to make music. Those who can are quite shy, taking time to emerge from their bedroom experimentations, first seeking audience via gender-blind subscription streams. Jones has been making for a while and last week put himself forward for Ola Liga's open night. A disjunctive collage style approximating, he imagines, the meaningless jumble of a Paz sufferer. It felt good. It felt weird. Expectation and judgment a loose noose that could tighten at any time. Mariana was encouraging. Take it further, she advised and Ivana dissected his motivations over vodkas until four in the morning. And he almost felt accepted. Tonight, the audience's XY stats are up by one, as he's come with this guy called Simon. He started working at the Cafe Jones cooks at. Most men give you a hard time, but Simon seemed interested, kept asking. So tonight, Jones is introducing him to Ola Ligas.
Ada abhors a crowd and plays in a small soundproof booth out the back. Each audience of one receives a seven minute session of sonic acupuncture. Tiny sounds. Some sting like insect bites, others twinge like a nerve pinch, some burn like a wax drop. All short, sharp psychic shocks to zap the synapses. Ada is a nerve core artist. Some nerve corists set up treatment clinics, call themselves practitioners, but Ada fights that femme nurturer paradigm. For her, it's about the aesthetics and effect. She wants to blow minds, not cauterize them. As she's powering down her gear, this guy Simon appears, had a session an hour ago, wants to say how amazing it was. She thanks him and moves towards the door, which he's blocking, which he's now closing behind him, moving towards her, scanner in hand, taking her measure, pressing her back into the chair. As she protests, he explains, they've been watching, there is potential, her techniques might be useful, reactivate, rehabilitate, cure even. They've realigned priorities to make it seem they don't care, but this it's inequality? Unacceptable. Her cooperation will be rewarded, or it will be forced. As he firmly guides her into the back seat of the black car in the lane, he leans in and whispers, After all, is it not your duty to redress the imbalance? 